I'm someone that uh, studied illustration, so I'm definitely um, beyond comics. I'm really interested in art, and I'm 25, and I live in Brooklyn right now. I say almost all of it is real, but in the sense that it's a sentiment or feeling that comes from me or a thought that I had, and then I just translate it into comic form. So I shorten it and try to make it funny. But yeah, the sentiments are all mine. <laughs> <laughs> I write first, and it usually, it takes me a really long time to come up with ideas. So I usually spend like a full day trying to write the idea. And then I don't, I usually don't draw until the evening. And that's a more straightforward process. So I work in Photoshop on a Cintiq 13 HD and it only takes me maybe an hour to two hours to draw and then I upload it. So most of the work is in the writing. I, I think at this point, it's sort of just intuition. Um, I sort of try to go with a gut feeling, but a lot of times I run the comics by some of my friends or my boyfriend and I try to see their reactions. And sometimes I'll send like three or four and um, yeah, I'm just trying to scope out how they feel too. So uh, it's sort of a mixed process as well. <laughs> I don't know how willing they are. I sort of just text it to them while they're at work. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think a lot of people feel really connected to the character and because a lot of people see themselves in it. And so I, I think that degree of relatability forms a sense of intimacy. Um, and it sort of, it goes a little bit both ways for me. A lot of times I, I feel like I have a very clear idea of who I'm writing for. Depends what the feedback is. Um, I think... Maybe I think once or twice um, I've been called out for maybe accidentally being offensive or, um, you know, saying something that could have been said in a nicer way. Um, and uh, those types of criticisms I tend to listen to. Um, but I think most of my comment section is people tagging each other anyways. <laughs> um, so I don't I don't go too deep. I don't do like deep dives into <laughs> what people are saying. <laughs> Cartooning and illustration are so different and you you really need to approach them differently. And so the simplicity was really key to the comic. And at the beginning, even though I was studying fine art, essentially, and like spending all day doing figure drawings, um, cartooning is a completely different world, in my opinion. So I had no guidance for that and I I was such an amateur you know I, I feel like even if you are a really good traditional artist you might not necessarily know how to translate that into simplicity um, so I, I really approach the two worlds very differently and I, I sort of keep them a little bit separate I was actually a creative writing minor, <laughs> so I I spent a lot of time studying writing as well. So car being a cartoonist was like a really um, ideal choice that I was sort of trained for because I was an illustration major with a writing minor. So I, I sort of had um, experience both in drawing and writing. Wow, and the format changed initially because I wanted it to work on scrolling websites. And so this was sort of pre-Instagram. Um, and so I, I made them vertical. But I think the five panel thing was just the result of my natural pacing. The panels do change or I use more or less in certain comics. But five is pretty typical. And it's just for some reason it's my natural pacing. And it, it's how I... Uh, land on a punchline most easy, most, most easiest. <laughs> it's really interesting because internet fame and like real life fame is sort of a different thing. Um, and I really like just having the comics be famous. Um, and my, my life is really like, it's the same that it was three years ago. I live in the same place. I still have two roommates. Um, and nobody recognizes me, um, you know, so I, so it's, 
it's sort of interesting because my, my life is totally normal. And then every couple of months I go to travel and suddenly I'm <laughs> doing interviews and I have lines and it's really surreal. And it's really exciting and it's sort of like a, a blip in reality and then I go back to my normal life, which is very convenient for the comics because my life is about being normal. <laughs> the time to draw is an issue because I know people are getting antsy that I need to go back and I, I need to write. So when I go home, I'm taking a little bit of a break from touring the books and I'm just going to be writing again. The sleep question. So I don't sleep <laughs> and I have, I have these really dark circles you can probably see on the camera <laughs> and that's a, a blessing from <laughs> from all the traveling it is a perfect, but it's all I think it's um it's I mostly sort of take stock of what I've done or what's available and pick the ones that have been hits and then the ones that are really special to me and then I sort of use that as a base so it becomes a best of collection. And then I, um, I work and make new comics um, for the rest of the book. I'm working on it. I just uh, signed a contract with the Awkward Yeti. It's um, Nick Selleck and he, he has really amazing merchandise. So I'm going to be pairing up with him and we're going to sort of take stock of what I have and I think we're gonna try to do a uterus plushie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'll send it to you for free. <laughs> um, they, it's gonna take a while because we're gonna redesign everything, um, but we're, well, it'll be out soon, I hope. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe like, if you could sort of amp up her, quirkiness and dark in her hair maybe someone like emma stone like <laughs> you know because she has that like really um expressive face <laughs> I, what would that movie look like i have no idea um uh, yeah maybe someone like her you know someone that is really expressive <laughs> i got some offers for to do a tv series and wound up saying no because i'm i have like really I'm really protective over the characters. Um, but my publisher is animating just um, some comics that I've already drawn and they're just animating it and putting a voice to it. So they're only like, you know, like 30 seconds. They're like these shorts. And um, we're sort of stuck at a point where we're trying to find the right voice actors because the animation looks great and the comics are ones people have already seen. But like I said, I'm really protective. So we're going through voice actors and I'm trying to find people that uh, I feel really fit and I don't, I don't want to use just anybody. So it might be a minute before those come out, but I think that will be the most people will see in terms of animation because I, uh, I really don't want to let people butcher the, <laughs> the work um, because, yeah, like I said, I'm very protective. <laughs> a website I'm on uh, called Tapastic, uh, acquired the rights to his story and he had he had written the story a few years ago and they were looking for another illustrator and they paired us up and um and yeah I, I sort of had the opportunity to recreate a story he had already written and with characters that were already written and um yeah it, when I go home that's the first thing I need to do is work on volume two um and so I, I met him recently in San Diego and he was a really great guy so it's been a really great experience to work with him best is for me i really put a lot of um, mental strain in writing so i would say like 90 percent of the effort that goes into sarah scribbles is the writing process so i've been sort of freed from that and i can just you know i can just draw which is just like sort of muscle memory and it's fun put on a podcast so it's it's actually a relief to have someone else writing um in terms of difficulty i think it was just um we all have different approaches and his original character designs were um quite different so i we all sort of have a balancing act of trying to use what we've been given and also put in our own feedback and so the colorist has a really different coloring style from what I use but 
you know, those differences actually made it stronger in my opinion. She has this very sort of like flat style and almost graphic and really I think I would have put in like a ton of shading and she was really emphasized on shape and so I think um you know initially the approach is sort of you have to juggle everyone's differences but um I think the end result if you can get through it um I'm really proud of it um there is a book version and so what's interesting is the even though it's presented on the phone, the way I drew it and the way it's colored is in page format because I think we knew um, from the beginning that we probably want to design this for a book and we did sign a deal. Um, so we will be releasing uh, the entire collection, um, but the distinct volumes are going to be released first. So right now, you know, I'm about to go do volume two and then that's going to come out. And I think at volume four, we're going to release a collection. And yeah, I think it, it's going to be really great because when you're working in pages, um, the pages are really cohesive and you don't necessarily see that. So like the colorist would sort of pick a theme for each page. And um, it looks, in my opinion, like a lot better <laughs> on, on print form. So I think people will be really pleasantly surprised to see it like that. I, I really love the golden age of illustration. So Kai Nielsen and then Arthur Rackham and Dulac and that whole crowd. And that was a good... Um, style to draw from for us because the story takes place in in that time but um we did want to modernize it a little bit and it you know that style the golden age style is so complicated it doesn't really quite work for a comic so yes miyazaki was also the second one and um miyazaki also has a huge influence in my cartooning work and i think he really informed the way the expressions are formed you know the way they physically change depending on the emotion i think that um really made sarah scribble so much more expressive from referencing that so he's one of my heroes <laughs> yeah! actually no um I, I really should have read it because i'm a work in comics but i have not read it or even seen what it looks like and when i saw the first comment that was like oh this reminds me of the Lost Girls, I was like, I'm not even going to look at it because I don't want to accidentally reference it. Um, I'll, I'll go look at it after, though. But yeah, it was, um, I'm sure there are similarities and I think the characters are the same, but I'm trying to kind of keep a blind eye for right now. <laughs> I really want to do more collaborations with other web comics. Um, I think I'm going to try to find the time this summer, but there's so many, there's so many characters that I would love to see interact. Um, one, I think there's a, there's a webcomic called Pigeoneer Jane. And I think like, you know, getting those two girls together or, um, you know, maybe even in heart and brain, like what if I brought the uterus to go meet heart and brain? <laughs> um, so uh, there, there's so many people that if they offered, I would, jump on the opportunity so i i do hope it'll happen i'm gonna throw out the obvious ones first so calvin and hobbs and calvin and hobbs and peanuts are <laughs> absolute essentials and then i think the far side i think those are they shaped cartooning in so many ways um i would say for the modern web comic I would personally pick Ali Brosh's Hyperbole and a Half. And in terms of scope and influence, I would also pick XKCD. I read a lot in my spare time, and I actually I read a lot of nonfiction, um, which maybe doesn't seem like it would be the obvious answer. Um, but I, I think my tastes outside of Sarah Scribbles tend to be more serious and a, a little bit moody so something i would recommend that's still a comic is um this one summer by jillian tamaki i mean it's really popular a lot of people have read it but it's just so you know i i feel like she really showed that i mean people already knew this actually but it, 
she made her comics into an art form it's really you know it's really stunning so it's one of my top favorites so maybe i'll recommend that one <laughs> <laughs>